Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to problem 3.19 in David Griffiths Electrodynamics. So, our problem statement is that the potential at the surface of a sphere, radius capital R, is given by this. Uh, K times cosine of 3 theta, where K is a constant. And we want to find the potential inside and outside the sphere, as well as the surface charge density sigma as a function of theta on the sphere. And assume there's no charge inside or outside the sphere. All right. <clears throat> Let's, uh, let's start this problem. So our first step is to, um, <clears throat> to do anything really, we need to be able to express our, uh, our known potential on the surface as a function of Legendre polynomials. Um, so what, there is a trig identity that you can use for uh, cosine of three theta. And essentially, cosine of three theta is the same as four cosine cubed theta minus three cosine of theta. Um, so this is just a trig identity that I had to look up. Um, and, you know, it's on the internet, you can find it. Um, it's in textbooks, I'm sure. So expressing it like this, though, allows us to get uh, this term to look more like Legendre polynomials because if you recall, like P3, the third Legendre polynomial, um, let, me, let me write it, is essentially, I think there's a, a half, and then it's like five cosine cubed of theta minus three cosine of theta. So, you know, already this term is already starting to look somewhat like a Legendre polynomial. So, what we want is we want this to equal some uh, some function of, of the third and the first Legendre polynomial. And the reason I, I choose the third and the first is first of all, the third already looks much like it. So, <clears throat> but if I just have a single constant alpha, there's not going to be a single constant alpha probably that um, can make the four turn into a five halves and make also the three turn into a, th a negative three halves. So <clears throat> I add on a beta uh, uh, times the first Legendre polynomial, because if you recall, the first Legendre polynomial is, <clears throat> is just cosine of theta in terms of cosine of theta. So I can, I can amend a second term with you know, some proportional constant to make the second term equal what it should be. So <clears throat> with some chosen uh, alpha and beta, we can make this term uh, in terms of the Legendre polynomials. And so how do we do that? Uh, well, in this case, you know, the k's are canceled out and we just do some coefficient matching. So for the first term, um, we have four cosine cubed is equal to alpha times the third Legendre polynomial, so one half of this. And so we want <clears throat> this four to equal alpha times five halves. So in other words, five halves alpha is equal to four, solve for alpha and you get eight fifths. So if alpha is eight fifths, this first term will be the same as this. And then <clears throat> what we want is for the second term, negative three cosine theta, we want that to be equal to negative three halves alpha cosine theta plus beta cosine theta. So we want to find, we already know what alpha is. Alpha is fixed to eight fifths, but now we want beta such that when we add these two terms, we get negative three halves cosine theta. And so just rewriting this, you can write beta minus three halves alpha is equal to cosine theta. You plug in alpha, you get beta minus 24 tenths cosine theta. And then solving, we get, um, Cancel out the cosine thetas on both sides, and then you get negative three is equal to beta minus 12 fifths. And solving for beta, you get uh, beta is equal to negative three fifths. So for alpha equal to eight fifths and beta equal to negative three fifths, we can express this, our function here, our potential function uh, like this in terms of, uh, so basically up here. So our potential function now expressed in terms of Legendre polynomials is eight fifths times a third, minus three-fifths times the first. And so that's really the first step to solving this problem. 
it's kind of just, you, you kind of have to use some creativity here to figure this out. Um, and then actually moving into solving um, the potentials for inside and outside. Um, as you recall, the potential, the generalized potential here for inside is given by this and outside is given by this. Um, these are the solutions to the radial, uh, the angular equations. And then um, the coefficient a sub l is given by 2l two sub two l plus 1 over 2 times the radius of the l's power uh, times this integral, which is dependent on our known function that we, our known potential function. And, <clears throat> and so really we just have to plug in our known potential function here and then and then solve for what our coefficients are. Now recall, um, this is in the book, but when you integrate um, two Legendre polynomials from zero pi, um, if they are if if the two l's are different, then you get zero. If they are the same, you get two over two l plus one. So that's just something to keep in mind. So plugging in, so let's take this integral expression and plug in this into v naught. So what we have is two l plus one over two r to the l. That's just our constants. Now we have, uh, I put a bracket and we have k and I factor out a one fifth um, from here. And then we have the integral from zero pi of eight times the third Legendre polynomial times the elf uh, polynomial times sine theta d theta. And then I just split this into two separate integrals. So we have a minus another integral three times the first Legendre polynomial times L, the elf Legendre polynomial times sine theta d theta. And so this is where we use this result here. So, um, you know, essentially this integral will always be zero in the summations unless L is equal to three for this one and L is equal to one for this integral. So the only terms that will survive in the summation are gonna be the third and the, the first and the third uh, coefficients here. So we can go ahead and set those equal to three and one and we already know the result when we do. So you just plug in three and one for this, uh, the L term here for two divided by two L plus one. So what we have is a sub L is equal to two L plus one over two R to the L. I have my K over five factored out. And then we have um, eight times two divided by two L plus one times the chronic or delta of three and L. So this chronic or delta term essentially saying, hey, this is gonna be zero unless L is three. And when it's three, it's gonna be, you know, the chronic or delta is just one. So if you don't know what the chronic or delta function is, uh, that's a topic for a different video, or um, I, I suggest you just use YouTube and, and kind of look up what the chronic or delta is. And so then we have the minus three times two because of this result divided by 2L plus one times the chronic or delta of one in L. And so, of course, the chronic or delta is gonna have to be, you know, it's gonna be one for the third and the first, uh, for L equal to three and L, L equal to one. So just plugging in three and one here, uh, what we have for the potential is, um, well, plugging in here, we have K over the capital R to the Lth power times five, and this is just me simplifying uh, everything. So let's see. So eight here is because the two, two times three, hang on, let me just verify. So two times three is six plus one is seven. What happened for, oh, sorry. The two L plus one here cancels the two L plus one outside. So that's where that went. Okay, so this cancels that. And all we're left with is k over r to the l times five, and this is just so this is just a simplification of this. Then this is equal to eight fifths k over capital R cubed, or yeah, over capital R to the third power when l is three. So when l is three, this term is gone, and we just have this term. When l is one, this term is gone, and we have minus three k over five r, and yeah. So that should be it for the coefficients. So we know what the two coefficients are. 
And so we now know what our potential inside is. Just plugging in there, we know that the summation is gone and we only have L equals one and three. So plugging in our coefficients, we have 8K over five R cubed times R to the third power times the third Lagrangian polynomial minus 3K over five R times R times the first Lagrangian polynomial. So this is the potential for inside the sphere in terms of Lagrangian polynomials. All right, so now we know, and in, in the book, it's derived that the, the, sec, the B sub L for the potential outside can be expressed in terms of A sub L. So B sub L is equal to A sub L times R to the 2L plus 1. So knowing this, we can immediately solve for what the, the B sub L coefficient is by just plugging in these two. So just do the algebra, plug them in. What you have is B sub L is 8K over 5 R to the fourth power for L equals 3 and negative 3K over 5 R squared for L equals 1. And then you can immediately uh, plug those two into the summation here and get your potential outside. So you have 8K over 5 R to the fourth times 1 over R to the fourth. And this is little r to the fourth. So it's a variable times the third Legendre polynomial minus 3k over 5 times r squared over little r squared times the first Lagrange polynomial. So there you have it. You have the potential inside and outside the sphere. And that's really it. So we just have to solve now for the, uh, the <clears throat> surface charge density on the sphere. And there's an equation in, uh, in the book. So equation 3.83 in chapter 3. Um, that kind of comes up sort of mid solving um, for, for a different uh, uh, different variable, but anyways, you can use it. So the surface charge density divided by epsilon naught is equal to the sum over L from zero to infinity of two L plus one times A sub L R to the L minus one, the radius times the L was under polynomial. So we know that in our case, L is only we only have the third and the first term in our summation, so let's just write it out. So our uh, surface charge density divided by epsilon naught is equal to seven from this term times eight K over five R cubed from the A sub L term. And we have R squared and then the third, the Jagger polynomial, uh, plus um, three times, uh, so this three comes from here, times negative three K over five R from the the coefficient times the first was under polynomial. Uh, this capital R is just one minus one, so it's just one. So this is our expression, and we just have to simplify. So I multiply by epsilon naught, and I lo it looks like what I do is that I use rearrange the terms. Let's re yeah, I think I just rearrange terms here, so swap them around, and I start multiplying through and pulling stuff out. So I pull out the k from both. I pull out a one fifth and I pull out a single R term. And what's left is negative nine times cosine theta. Um, and I'm actually plugging in the uh, Legendre polynomials now. And then here I have 56 over two. Um, and then the Legendre polynomial, I have five cosine cubed minus three cosine. Um, and then here I just, yeah. I pull out another cosine um, and also combine terms. So the negative nine, and so I multiply through combined terms. I get negative nine from here. I get 140 cosine squared from this term and then a minus 84 that comes from, I believe the 56 times the negative three and then, then the minus nine and, or, or one of these, some of these terms combined, you get negative 84. So this, is the final expression essentially and then you can combine the negative 9 and the 84 to get ne uh, negative 93 so the surface charge density is expressed like this epsilon naught times k over five uh, five times the radius times cosine theta times 140 cosine squared minus 93. all right that was a mouthful so if you guys have any questions uh, feel free to let me know down in the comments below, and I will try to answer them. Thank you guys very much.